So good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to this uh, set of presentations, uh, Securing Water for Food Pitch and Picture. Uh, we are excited to have you. We're thankful uh, to the organizers of Amsterdam International Water Week and our host and, and partner, uh, the Foreign Ministry of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, uh, for their uh, thanks and welcome and uh, great invitation today. Uh, we hope that you will enjoy the next hour and 20 minutes uh, during which we hope that you'll be able to hear some of our exciting presenters, um, some of the innovations that we have, and some of the great success that we've been able to have in this first uh, year, year and a half of our program. So I'm going to first introduce our speakers um, from uh, our official dignitaries, excuse me, from the last to the first. Uh, Christian Holmes is a global, global water coordinator for USAID, uh, and he oversees all water programming both water sanitation hygiene related and water for food and water and agriculture programming, um, which is uh, over a two mil uh, $500 million budget. In addition, um, we have uh, Churston Johnson Cease, head of the unit of the global economy at the environment at CETA, uh, the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency. Uh, she holds a PhD in agroforestry from the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences and spent 11 years in West Africa with a special interest in the Sahelian region. Um, and first up uh, will be uh, Reina Baus, uh, Deputy Director uh, for International Cooperation at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. She has an educational background in health and nutrition uh, from the public health from Wageningen University. And she also has lived and worked in Nicaragua, uh, Zimbabwe, Ecuador, and most recently she was Ambassador of the Netherlands in Nicaragua. Good morning. I'm very pleased to welcome you on behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the U.S. Agency of International Development, and the Swedish Agency for International Development at our workshop, Secur Securing Water for Food Innovation, Pitch and Picture. USAID, Sweden, and the Netherlands have launched the Securing Water for Food Challenge in 2013 to identify and accelerate innovation to improve water efficiency in the food chain and alleviate poverty. I'm happy that you all are here to learn about some of the latest water efficiency innovations which are crucial for circular economy and resilient cities, the theme of the Amsterdam International Water Week. And we are here to meet the winners of this year. These new winners join a larger group of innova innovators who were previously awarded. The World Economic Forum identified water as the number one threat for the world economy in 2015. The demand for water is growing, growing fast, because of economic growth, population growth, changing diets, and urbanization. By 2050, Global water demand is expected to increase by 55%. Yet, as we all know, the amount of fresh water will remain the same. Countries in North Africa and Middle East and in other parts of the world are depleting their water reserves. Water scarcity has been identified as one of the root causes of conflict and migration in the Middle East. Cities in Latin America and Asia are bringing their water resources from ever-increasing distances. 70% of global water consumption occurs in agriculture. This is where an increase in water productivity can have the largest impact. If we want our cities to become resilient with sustainable access to food supplies, water efficiency in our food chains need to be drastically improved. This is an urgent agenda. We, ne we need to act fast. Innovations can initiate changes in agricultural water efficiency on the farmer's field. They can also change water use in a whole food system. Innovation can help produce more crop per drop, or they can instigate the reuse of water in food production and processing. 
They can foster storage of water in times of abundance for later use or seek different food business models minimizing water use. They may even add fresh water resources by making saline water usable for food. Game changers need to be identified and tested. And if they turn out to be successful, they need to be accelerated and scaled up. There is no time to lose. In four weeks, the Paris Climate Summit will start, at a time when almost every day new rainfall or storm records are announced in the news. Climate change, in combination with growing cities and changing diets, increases the pressure on water resources and makes it even more urgent to develop resilient food systems. The political and media attention for climate change stimulates awareness for natural capital-friendly capital businesses and demand to innov innovative approaches. It also encourages people to think out of the box. Water efficiency gains for food can be found through innovations in all kinds of different sectors, not only in the water or agriculture sectors, but also in social media, financial systems, technical designs or cooperation models. And indeed, some of the more innovative proposals we got can't be tied to one sector. There are plenty of good ideas and cutting edge innovations around. In every part of the world, people come up with innovations and uh, innovative ideas. In the Securing Water for Food Challenge, we were not looking for innovations at the ARICA stage, innovation 1.0, so to say. We looked for innovations that have already been piloted and for which there is a proven demand. Yet I dare say that for such a global and complex problem, a water for food, and in countries where the enabling environment is less conducive, innovations at stage 2.0 may not easily be brought to scale either. Therefore, what we looked for are Innovation 3.0, where social and environmental impact is combined with proper business models. We sought NGO applicants working on inclusive green development, which are progressively looking for sustainable financing models or have private business as a partner. And we identified private sector innov innovators who realized that natural capital is eroding as food producers and processors they will need to secure their resource base and consider water as an element of their core business. Inclusiveness may be another important asset for them as 80% of world food is produced by smallholder farmers of which 70% are women. Water efficiency innovations geared towards these groups can have a promising market. This links nicely with the global goals, which have defined the international development agenda for the coming 15 years. In several of these go global goals, the world has agreed to economize water resources in economic sectors, such as in food production, goal 2, sustainable production and consumption, goal 12, and across all other sectors, goal six. And it links the focus of the Dutch government to combine aid and trade. The private sector is playing an increasingly important role in necessary investments, from which vulnerable groups can profit as well. Partnerships are key to Innovations 3.0. The securing water for food inno innovators need partners that bring in different expertise and networks. That's why private businesses seek collaboration with NGO or southern and northern partners work together. This is added value. And this brings me to the first important announcement, announcement in this workshop. We were thrilled to note the enormous interest in the challenge program. 450 proposals this year, 520 applications last year, from all countries in the world, from Latin America to East Asia. Many great ideas, 
from drought-resistant symbiotic bacteria to providing farmers with high-quality weather data to improve crop management. And I have the honor, and I'm very pleased, to announce the winners of 2015. They are the Water Governance Institute, which will promote commercial aquaponics farming among smallholder farmers and households for water efficiency, food security, and livelihoods improvements in Uganda. The second one, Instituto per la Cooperazione Universitaria, which will improve water efficiency and vegetable production through the implementation of an irrigation scheduling system in Peru. Then th third, Conservation South Africa. Eco ranges and meet naturally, securing water for life in South Africa and beyond. The next one, Sea Technologies, New Sill for Reduced Water Use in Agriculture in India and South Africa. Next is CSDES, which is called M fodder, less water for more fodder in Kenya and beyond. Then the Center for Environment Concerns. They will work on the world's first moisture control system at root zone level in India and Ethiopia. Then we have Green Heat Uganda. They aim at reducing anaerobic digestion water demand with slurry separation technology in Uganda. Then again, the Instituto per la Cooperazione Universitaria, the Buried Diffuser, an underground water-saving irrigation system in Tunisia. Again, Instituto per la Cooperazione Universitaria, the Croesus water box in Jordan. I think, yes, that's the right one. Then we have Ignatia AB, critical business intelligence for water efficiency in Ivory Coast, Ghana, and beyond. Then we have Islamic Relief Kenya, increasing agro-pastoral and pastoral incomes through production of high-value fruits and vegetables using agro-solar irrigation technology in Kenya. And the last one, Mita Mita, water pads, enabling low-cost mobile water buffling in Turkey. Please, a big round of applause for the 12 winners working in 20 countries. Later you will hear their amazing stories and along with those of previous Securing Water for Food awardness. Thank you very much and I hand over to Kirsten from SIDA. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Barbara Cosentino, and I'm an HQ officer of ICU, Istituto per la Cooperazione Universitaria. ICU is an Italian NGO based in Tunisia since uh, 2013, and uh, there we had the opportunity to, um, to meet on the field uh, Dr. Ciarabani. Dr. Ciarabani is the inventor of the, the bird diffuser, this innovation that I'm going to explain to you in a while. But uh, um, first of all, I would like to tell you how uh, Dr. Ciarabani had the idea to develop this product. Actually, uh, his grandfather used to bury a clay jar under the soil in order to uh, make the water to diffuse uh, slowly to the roots uh, of the plant. So he had this idea and he developed this uh, berry diffuser. You have uh, just to connect this to a drip irrigation uh, system and uh, here there is a, a water flow regulator that you can use uh, um, to deliver water uh, from uh, two liters uh, until 80 liters per hour. Then the water comes directly into the pipe and uh, then there is the diffusing part. So you need to bury the berry diffuser at uh, 50 centimeters uh, under the uh, subsoil uh, surface and uh, when the water is coming to the diffusing part, it will be diffused uh, thanks to the uh, five millimeters of uh, siliceous grains that are inside. So uh, what, uh, what are the, um, 
the benefits of this innovation. Uh, basically, uh, you are going to save 30% uh, of water compared to a drip irrigation uh, uh, conventional system. You can save uh, fertilizer because it's going uh, directly to the, the roots of the plant and there is uh, no evaporation at all because uh, uh, it's completely buried and in the, uh, in the picture you can see once it's buried you, the, you will have just the uh, water flow regulator and the drip irrigation connection. Uh, moreover, if it's uh, col uh, connected with the water tank, uh, you can just use uh, the gravity uh, for the irrigation, so you will also save uh, energy. So basically, we decided to apply to the securing water for food in order to spread, uh, spread uh, the, the innovation and uh, to scale up the innovation at the national level. What we need uh, is especially to have commercial partners that uh, want to um, sell the product uh, in uh, Tunisia and uh, in other countries and uh, uh, institutional partners too. Actually, in uh, Tunisia, we already uh, started with, um, um, with, the uh, with the process for uh, obtaining subsidies from the government. So the Minister of agriculture is already evaluating the opportunity to subsidize the, the product. And uh, the, the real problem we solve, uh, especially in a, in a country like Tunisia, where there, is a, uh, there are regions that are arid or semi-arid, is to make uh, water use management uh, uh, more sustainable in, uh, in irrigated agriculture. So if you're interested in uh, being a partner, uh, we, we will also uh, have the opportunity during the realization, uh, the implementation of the product, uh, of the project, to create some um, uh, informa informative activities uh, and uh, we will uh, create some uh, demonstration plots uh, to the farmers uh, in order to uh, make them know the, uh, the product and to adopt it. Thank you.